thing you all know. Um, so happy that you were able to join. And my name's Marty, like Libby said, and um, I just really enjoy making stuff with essential oils. I started, I learned about essential oils for the first time in, um, I guess about six years ago. My daughter is six now. So um, that's how I think, that's how I remember it. Um, and um, anyway, I, over the years, I've just, you know, thought of each of the things that I um, use and thought, I wonder if I could make that and doing research, you know, finding a lot of different things online. You can just Google anything and come up with um, tons of different websites and recipes and things like that. So I just thought, hey, it's time for me to share my tricks, <laughs> like get some tips out there and why not tell other people how I do it. It's totally simple. And like Libby said, tonight especially is something you can just do um, from your pantry. You know, like, you know, we can't go anywhere or be together. Um, someday I'd love to do these with people um, in a space together. But tonight you can just um, probably grab everything from your, um, from your pantry. So I'm gonna um, show you what we're gonna need. So we're gonna make a sugar scrub. And uh, I've got my things over here, glass bowl. Um, actually, I think I can spotlight that when we come to it. Um, glass, because some essential oils um, react with plastic. And so um, to keep those plastics from getting into the product you're making, you can just um, use glass and there you go. Um, a spoon, usually again, a metal spoon is good. Um, I have some measuring spoons here too. so. You don't really have to measure, um, but if you want to, you can. And then sugar, um, granulated sugar, not powdered sugar, and um, also not sugar in the raw, and I'll talk more about that, um, and then essential oils. So um, we're gonna make that really um, here in a second. And then if you need to gather any of these things, um, we're also gonna have time, because it's so quick, um, we're gonna have time to whip up some bath salts. You know, you're gonna be able to treat yourself after this. So um, I'm gonna use Epsom salts um, and essential oils for that. And again, a glass bowl and a spoon, um, and then any kind of measuring that you want for that. Um, if you wanna put it in a jar with a lid, I'll show you some examples of things like that. And then um, before we get started, I would just wanted to say like that I, um, use Young Living essential oils. So that's what I'm going to be sharing from tonight. And I, the reason I do is that um, they have the seed to seal promise. And anything that I'm putting on my body um, or in my body, I just think it's really vital to know um, exactly what it is and um, to what, what goes into it. And this seed to seal commitment um, means that Young Living monitors the process of all their plant-based um, products from seed all the way to seal. So they abide by very strict guidelines um, to fulfill this promise to us. And um, it ensures a top-notch quality and the effectiveness too. So a couple of points about, about this, the plant material is grown on farms that the company owns um, or carefully vetted partner farms. And you can even visit those farms. Um, and they use sustainable farming and sourcing practices, um, which provides for the purest oil. And great care is taken to preserve and protect the natural resources in that process, which is important to me. They hand weed their fields and don't use any pesticides, zero pesticides. So that's nice knowing that these pure concentrated essential oils going on my body have never um, come in contact with um, with that, with pesticides. Um, they do, the oils do retain all their natural constituents and therapeutic properties. I'll talk about a, some of those with the ones I'm gonna use tonight. Um, they use food grade distillers with state-of-the-art design and distillation methods, um, low pressure and low temperature distillation, no solvents, no synthetic chemicals. Um, they use rigorous testing on each batch with their internal labs and with third party facilities. And um, every oil is carefully reviewed through every step of production in order to meet or exceed industry safety and purity standards. So it's not just organic, it's not just pure, it's not just therapeutic grade, it's all of those things 
and beyond. It's just a really um, top-notch product. So, and the best part is if the oils in the end don't meet their standards, um, Young Living rejects them and will not bottle them as a Young Living product. So they'd rather have something go out of stock. Um, and if you've ever tried to order on Young Living, you've seen oftentimes a product could go out of stock. They'd rather that happen than let an inferior product slip through to us. Um, and anyway, it's rare to find such a rare, um, such a company that takes such high standards. And um, so that is why I use Young Living. And um, that might have given you time to go and gather your things. Um, and here we go. So I think we can spotlight me on this other um, one. <laughs> So if at any time you can't hear me or you want me to do something different, um, just let me know. But this is my little homemade studio. <laughs> so um, I've got my white sugar here and I also brought brown sugar just to talk about it. Um, and also some people might prefer um, coconut sugar. So we've got you know, your coconut sugar, the grams, the granular, granular size of that is about the same as brown sugar. Um, but I'm just going to use white sugar because it's easy. You wouldn't want to use sugar in the raw um, because of the grain size. It's a little too coarse, a little too big. Um, I've heard that it's uncomfortable. I haven't tried it. Um, so we're going to use just uh, I was doing this the other night. I was, I made my husband um, use it because we were both complaining of our um, winter hands. <laughs> so what I did um, seemed to be a pretty good um, method, but I just had like a, this is a tablespoon of sugar. And if you just want to try out a batch and kind of see what flavors or oil, I mean, not flavors, but scents that you like, um, this might be a good size for you to try. So just a tablespoon of sugar. You could, if you're going to make a whole jar, you know, maybe see what size jar that is, but um, you could do um, something like this size would be about um, a half cup. Um, if you can see this mason jar, actually the very first thing I ever got with essential oils was from a, a baby shower I attended and it was um, grapefruit scented sugar scrub and it was in a jar just like that. And then um, I mentioned that I started using Young Living products and essential oils um, when my daughter was born. And um, I remember about a year after that when we were buying baby food jars that I um, painted the lids with this chalkboard paint. And then I made um, sugar scrub in um, white and pink. And I, so I, tint, I made one bowl of plain and, one, and peppermint scented and another bowl of peppermint scented, um, but I tinted it red. And then I layered it into these bottles and put a cute little candy cane um, label on it and told my coworkers um, that they could, you know, bring it back empty for a refill if they ever wanted to. Um, but um, anyway, so that was kind of fun to have, you know, that's another DIY thing you can do is really cute jars and labels and whatever, but um, for tonight, I'm just going to make it in my little glass kitchen bowl and um, I'll probably use it up here before in the next couple of days in my bathroom on my hands and feet. Um, for the oil, um, because you want to make it something that kind of rubs on your body, I use this grapeseed oil. The other night when I made it, um, I just used olive oil from the kitchen. And um, I've heard that coconut oil works with this well too. Um, although it can be solid at temperatures over what, 70 degrees. So um, if you're melting it down to mix it in with your sugar uh, and it gets too hot, it could melt your sugar and you don't want that to happen. So if you're melting or heating up your coconut oil in order to blend it with the sugar, just be careful not to get it too hot. Um, but tonight I'm just going to use my grapeseed oil. I've done, you know, re online research, like I said, is kind of great, but um, I'm just going to do a teaspoon of it here and mix it in. I think I'll use one of my smaller things to kind of stir it. Can you see it kind of starting to 
doesn't really dissolve. It just sort of makes this crumbly, wonderful mixture. And I'm gonna try to get all, incorporate all of the sugars. Uh, should I be a little closer? So that's not making that much. But like I said, it's just a little bit for me to use up. I'm not, I wanna try a few different scents and recipes to see what I might wanna make a big batch of someday. Cause this would keep, um, there's nothing in this that's gonna, um, you know, not last in a sealed jar for a while. Okay, so that's all mixed up. And I was looking at some of my oils that I have and thought that I would use um, lavender because I probably am gonna use this at bedtime. And I know that that's really good for um, sleep. And then I love lemongrass. I was telling Libby the other day, I love using lemongrass at bedtime. And I don't even know why. So I was looking it up today. I just have the, um, there's this pocket reference book um, that I was uh, reading out of. I'm gonna switch cameras for a second. Um, Cause I don't think it'll be, oh, so it says lavender is really good for a ton of stuff, but very reflex, re very relaxing and calming and balancing. And then lemongrass, the one I was looking up, is um, it says lemongrass is used for purification and digestion. Well, I'm not taking it internally here, although I could eat that. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to. Um, historically, it was used for hypertension, inflammation as a sedative and for treatment of fevers. Um, it has been tested against MRSA, um, which is, um, the staph bacteria, and, and it has been found remarkably um, to completely inhibit MRSA growth. Um, and it's antifungal, antibacterial, antiparasitic, anti-inflammatory, regenerates connective tissues and ligaments, improves circulation, anti-cancerous. Anyway, um, all of those things made me think, Wow, that's, I'm actually getting a lot of benefits from this um, product at the same time that I'm um, just thinking it smells great and putting it on my, um, putting it on my hands. So um, it doesn't take much for the amount that I made, just the tablespoon of sugar. Um, so I'm gonna put one drop of, can we still see? Yeah, I'm gonna put one drop of lemongrass in there and um, one drop of lavender and then mix it up again. And I wish that we had smell-o-vision so you could join me in the amazing moment that this is right here. <laughs> um, anyway, have you got who, since we have a pretty small group, you guys can just feel free to unmute and share. Um, who has used sugar scrubs before and found the exfoliating helpfulness or kind of that um, massage -y type feeling. Anyone want to tell about a sugar scrub you've tried before or whether you have? I've used it before, but I've never made it. They've always been gifts that have been given to me. So um, I appreciate you sharing it so I know how to make it. <laughs> yeah, it's super easy. Now that you know, you'll be like, now I know why they gave us gifts like that because um, it's so easy to make. It's also really, um, I'm glad you said that. It's, it's very, um, you can modify it so easily. So, you know, I shared my ratio. You can find recipes online if it's a little too, like you want it to be like wet sand so that it, um, you know, holds its shape, um, but you don't want it to be too um, like runny so that you're gonna get all, uh, messy feeling when you're using it. Um, and anyway, this will keep just fine for me um, till bedtime. And I have a little lid I can put on this and use it maybe tomorrow if I have time. So I'm done with my lemongrass lavender sugar scrub. Oh, and it smells amazing. Um, any other, we ready to move on to bath salts? Well, Marty, I've got 
I have a question. How frequently would you use a sugar scrub? I mean, do you, daily, once a week? What do you normally recommend? Oh, wow. It's really just as needed. I don't think there is, um, there's not going to, I mean, other than over exfoliating and kind of feeling raw, I can't imagine there being a problem with um, using it as often as you'd like. Um, I guess I would, I'm probably more the one to like save things and not use them until I really think I need them though. So, um, you know, maybe you just look at the condition of your hands and feet and kind of think, is, am I, you know, do I need some added moisture? Because the, the sugar is going to exfoliate that layer of dead skin and kind of smooth off the, um, anything that like, I get a lot of, um, think like parts of my skin this time of year that sort of catch on soft fabrics and things like that. So it's going to smooth that off. And then the oil, um, the grapeseed or olive oil or whatever carrier oil you're using is going to moisturize. And then the essential oils are just giving you that um, fragrance and health benefits um, of whatever their constituents contain. So um, yeah, I don't think that there's a way that you could overdo it unless you just get to the point where your hands are, you know, they're exfoliating too. So hands, hands, feet, elbows, legs. Yeah. I mean, before yeah. I shower, I mean. You could you use it in the shower. Okay. Yeah. And if you're making it to use in the shower or in the bath, um, you might want to, you know, stay away from citrus essential oils and just put it in a plastic tub. I think citrus are the ones that degrade plastic most. Um, and if you're staying away from them, you might be safe in a, um, in a plastic container of some sort, if you think you're going to, you know, slip and drop it or anything. Um, so, I have used it in the tub. Um, I have used it on my legs. I think, you know, any, any place you want exfoliating um, or that kind of stimulation from the, um, it's just, you, you can feel uh, the grains against your skin and it kind of stimulates that circulation too. Um, I've heard of people using it on their lips. Um, I have really sensitive skin on my face, especially. So, um, I feel like that would hurt me. So I haven't tried that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it is, you know, something you can, um, try elbows, knees, feet, hands, um, the places that kind of, um, have the most, um, like dried skin effect. Yeah. Anything else on sugar scrubs? Are you gonna go make some after this? Yes. Looks like Valerie is making some now. And Camry, good, okay. All right, then we'll move on and talk about um, Epsom salt. Um, so actually you can make bath salts. Um, you might actually, if you do some web research and find recipes for bath salts, DIY bath salts with essential oils, just you know, look around. Um, even um, in the library, you might find books with recipes. Um, I've run across some people who use other kinds of salts, but I, I use Epsom salts um, for bath salts. I don't use it that often, but um, it's, I think Epsom salts are really great for reducing inflammation and kind of drawing out um, anything that's the, the buildup, um, in your, in my joints and, um, and, um, it's calming as well. And so I just buy it at Target. Here's my Epsom salt, <laughs> big old bag of Epsom salts. And I just buy them plain. And then if I want a fragrance with them, if I want the benefits of the aromatherapy and the Young Living oils, then I add my own. So that's what I'm gonna to do tonight to show you. It's so super easy. It could be even easier than this. Um, it could be that you just grab, you know, a measuring cup and you're, you've got your warm running bath and you just like scoop a few scoops. I think the bag says to put up to two cups in a warm running bath for a soak. Um, 
And then you could just drop some oils into your tub. Um, and that's super easy. You could also um, want to give it as a gift. And um, in that case, you might wanna have a jar instead of just walking over to someone's house and pouring some salts out of a bag, right? So you wanna make it in a little jar or something. I think this one is from the dollar store and um, has a nice ceiling lid. Um, and I am not gonna use carrier oil in it. Um, I'm just gonna mix um, I'm just going to stir some essential oils into the Epsom salts and they're going to sit in that jar and infuse. But there are recipes that have, um, like I said, um, other kinds of salts and as well as carrier oils. So I've got, I just measured out um, a cup of Epsom salts here because I know that that's about how much it's going to fit in my jar. And then I'm just going to, um, mix it. Probably could have done it right there in the measuring cup and saved myself a dish. Um, and I'm, my favorite one to do for this is stress away. So if you have the starter kit, you got stress away in it. Um, this is, I can't think of an oil that I like better. And I'm going to read from the pocket reference on this too. This is a gentle fragrant blend that brings feelings of peace and tranquility to both children and adults and helps relieve daily stress and nervous tension. It helps with normal everyday stress, improves mental response, restores equilibrium, promotes relaxation and lowers hypertension. And it's a blend made from copaiba, lime, cedarwood, vanilla, okatea and lavender. So if that doesn't just describe to you a bath right there, then I don't know what does. <laughs> it's like the most amazing smell. So um, have you guys seen that there's one of these, that there's a tiny hole in there? I'm going to see if I can show you. I don't think it's going to. Do you see the tiny hole, right? Yes. OK, right there. Oops. Sorry, I can't point and look at the same time. It's right down here. That's where the oil comes out. This big hole in the center, that circle, is um, an air hole. Is that right, Libby? So the oil. Yes, comes... it's a the air intake hole, and then yeah. the little teeny pin prick hole is where the oil is coming out. Did Did you say one cup of Epsom salt? Yep. So okay. I'm doing. That's what's going to fit in my jar. Um, okay. If I was doing one of these littler jars, I would use less. I just dropped 10 drops in and um, I think that's going to be enough. So let me get my whatever stir I haven't used yet. And it has already sort of congealed. It's hard to see because it's all white, but um, where the oils hit the salt, it's um, caking up right there. And so my stirring is just gently mixing that in and now it's all going to be infused into this whole bowl. And now, oh my gosh, my room smells incredible. <sighs> Don't have time for a bath tonight, uh, but I'll jar this up and be ready when I do have time. So I just wanted to share that I don't take baths often, but I take showers and just taking a spoonful of that or a half a cup, just like you'd put in the bath, just sprinkle it in the shower and walk on it. And it, you know, gets into your feet and it smells amazing because of the steam. It feels like a, you know, steam shower. It's wonderful. The Epsom salts dissolve under your feet? Yeah. In the shower? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And it's exfoliating to your feet because of the coarseness. That's wonderful. The, um, one thing about you were talking, we were talking about sugar scrub in the shower. And since there is oil in it, um, I just would be really careful using it on your feet in a shower um, because oil can make your shower really slick. But since this doesn't have a carrier oil in it, it would not be as, uh, not create a slickness in your shower. 
even in a bath and then you stand, if you use sugar um, or anything real oily in your bath and then you stand up in it, um, the surface can get real slick. So be careful. Is this separate from the sugar scrub? Yeah, this is a totally different product. We've moved okay. on to the second item. I couldn't pick which one to do tonight, so we are doing both. Um, so I got it all mixed in, and now I'm just gonna try to um, get it into my jar. I'm gonna have to use a funnel. I know I didn't tell you guys to bring a funnel, but um, it's just gonna go everywhere. And over time, I will get it all the way down in there. But for time's sake, and to let you have a chance to go and do this, I will stop there and just show you. So I'm not gonna take time to fill it all the way up, but that's part of DIY, right? You've got um, the process you're going through, and then I'll have all of this to clean up, um, which is really just two bowls and a thing of measuring spoons. Um, and I'll have my delicious exfoliating hand scrub and my wonderful stress away bath um, with just a little bit of effort. So yeah, in less than 30 minutes, we got both of them made. Any other? I have a question. So um, you use 10 drops of stress away. Mm -hmm. If you were using, like if there were other oils that you would recommend, would you still, for that kind of ratio, say about 10 drops? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, you mean like if there's a fragrance that is a little more powerful or a little less powerful? Yeah. Or yeah. I, yeah, or if you were just doing a different type of um, scent or whatnot, and if you would still do about 10, or it just kind of depends on the oil. Yeah, I would do about 10. Um, I, for 10 to a cup. Okay. Um, and that, um, yeah, I was just gonna look at a couple of recipes I have from this book I got from the library. Um, they used a two ounce glass jar and they used five. Um, so, two, oh, this doesn't have ounces, but two ounces is about a fourth of a cup, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm probably a little lighter on my um, ratio than, than this one. So if it's five drops to, to, to a fourth of a cup there, you could go more, um, essentially is what it's saying there, I think. Um, it's not, you know, it's not an exact science. Um, there might be people who swear by certain ratios, but, um, um, I, I guess I operate more by trial and error. I just mm -hmm. go for it and see. And if it wasn't enough, then I think also if I know that I can already smell that and I know I'm going to be putting it in that jar, um, that I, it's probably strong enough for me. Um, I'm going to stop recording and do the drawing and then we stay on as long as you'd like or you're welcome to go. You, you can ask whatever questions you have. Let me stop the recording. I just want to say hi to Whitney. I haven't seen her in so long. So good.